What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Rain Day, and I'm excited to talk to you guys about something that's been on everyone's mind, and in the next two days will be on the world's mind, Apex Legends Season 4. Now, we talked a ton in my latest video, or one of my latest videos, 50 things we need from Apex Legends Season 4. But in that, I wanted to be realistic and also talk about the things that we want that we're definitely not getting, that you want. Literally, you. You, Mr., Mrs., whoever you are okay I, it's not a big deal to me that you want an apex season four that you're not getting all right and i know this may be shocking i know you may not want to hear it but let's le i'm going to level with you because a lot of people have some misconceptions and i'm going to break them down one by one I've, I've compiled a list of things i just feel like and know from my experience and things that have been confirmed that aren't happening that people still feel are happening in apex season uh four and i want to get the air clear right now let me know if you disagree first of all leave a like because we're back here, baby, Rain Day Gaming. I plan on having weekly videos, daily videos for you guys this week. So enjoy. I just finished casting the last Apex Legends uh, Pro Competitive Tournament that just went on online. And had a great time hanging out with everybody as well. Some other content creators like Lulu Lovely were there. Um, and of course, a lot of my casting buddies. Anyways, I also want to say why I'm wearing this jacket. I'll tell the story at the end of the video or in the middle somewhere. But it's actually really funny. I look very dressed. I look, I know I look like a biker. You know, it's like Rain Day left and now he's like, a, you know, an old biker dad. You know, I, I'm not riding a Harley Davidson. Okay, it's 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 a, a specific reason and I will get into it. It's actually really funny. All right, the first thing people want in season four, but they're definitely not getting is Forge. Now, Forge is the legend that was teased and uh, it's unfortunate to say, yes, yes, yes. I know you're thinking, but he could come back. But what if Hammond Robotics, they, you know, they do a little thing? No, it ain't happening. Let me tell you why. Forge is a two-pronged reason why he is not coming back. Let me tell you the first one. The design, a designer actually confirmed on Twitter an uh, interaction he is having in his mentions, his DMs, and confirming that Forge is dead. Uh, I don't have the link to it as well, but I followed him. I, I, I was surprised by it because I still had the, the thought that, hey, maybe he's alive. No, he's dead. And if he's saying he's dead, I don't think that means he's coming back. The other big reason I don't think Forge is coming back is because... Darren DePaul, who is the voice actor of Revenant, also voiced Forge. Now, that would also mean that he would be voicing two characters in the game, and so far in Apex Legends, that has never happened. And I don't think it will happen. When you look at Apex Legends and you look at the Octane, you look at Bangalore, you look at the way, even on their Twitter and their socials, how they promote these legends and their voice actors as individuals each, I don't think they would ever overlap too. If they're going to do a new legend, which they will, I think it's always going to be a new voice actor to keep building into the actual actors and that family and also uh, the voices in the game. And so that, I believe, Forge is dead, plus we have the confirmation. So no Forge, no little crazy, you know, rebuilding. He is gone uh, until we hear otherwise. Definitely this season not coming. Now let's look at number two. Loba. Loba, the, the girl, the, the con unconfirmed, confirmed data mine thought about legend in uh for a long time in apex legends uh, featured in the latest revenant trailer now that revenant trailer if you haven't seen it i reacted to it on my channel it's a great trailer and it shows a cold case happening that they were never able to find a killer who took down uh pretty much hammond robotics main head honcho and there was a girl in that situation whose parents happened to be the ones that uh, the revenant was targeting that is who people suspect is Loba. They even hint at it later on in the video with showing her kind of like leaning over her parents who have fallen from the sky, her father in particular, and kind of grimacing, showing like a little clip that she's out for revenge. And again, that was 25 years ago. So what will happen now? Well, she's 25 years older. We can expect that she can be coming into the uh, Apex Legends games, but not in season four. And here's why. Season 4 Apex Legends is unlike any other season in many ways. It's gone darker, it's added characters we didn't expect, it's killed off characters. And I think that's why people say, well, you know, you're, you can add two characters. Uh, you got two maps, King's Canyon and, and uh, World's Edge happening in ranked. Why not two characters? The reason is, Apex Legends is a long-term game. And in my opinion, they are saving what is the best decision is to save a legend per season. Now, they haven't veered off of that. Every season has had one legend. And when you look at experience, and I've had that experience of a game that's put out 17, 15 to 17 legends in one year in Paladins, it, it becomes impossible to maintain that pace. And with Apex having a longevity, kind of long process, thinking about the future so curated, I doubt they would rush that pace for Loba. 
Now, I believe in season five, we will see her. She's probably the next legend. You could see it already set up in the story, but they are slow world builders. We're seeing things connect from season one now in season four. And so I do not believe that we will get two legends here. It just sets an unprecedented pace Two legends would be like now we'd expect two legends every season or we'd think maybe three next season and it just becomes very hard to follow you know what i mean it's like taking your girlfriend out for your first date out to paris you know it's like you can't go to it's a olive garden after that you know what i mean you can't go to florence first date olive garden date two it, you can't go down that's the highest you got to build up to that so i don't think we're getting more than that all right that's number two let me know if you guys agree with that or disagree i just don't think we're seeing loba i think we will see loba teases but we will not see loba till season five all right, the other big thing that we want to talk about is the Gibraltar nerf, guys. Uh, the Gibraltar nerf. This is a big one, and uh, a lot of people have been asking about Gibraltar Gibby. He's just being buffed and buffed and buffed, and this is a very interesting one. They're saying, when will you nerf Gibraltar? Because he's getting played at high level. He's so effective, and this is something that commonly pros are talking about. The reason Gibraltar will not be nerfed, sorry to say it, is because I think people are looking at the wrong information. Or they're just not looking at the information that the designers are looking at. Listen, I've been in this situation before. I have a very good story about the designers that I used to work with over at High res and good friends of mine, great friends. We'll, we'll call them lifelong friends. And we'd have uh, every Friday, we'd go out to lunch and we'd talk about things. But even then, we'd also go out and, and have meetings around these characters and say, these are the characters in competitive, they're dominating. And the biggest toss and turn, the biggest struggle with us was saying, this character is dominant, first pick ever since he's been made or been introduced into the game. And what they would do is they would open the stats, they'd look at the entire player base, not just that 1% of competitive players good enough to play in a pro league, less than 1%, 0.01%. And they would say, this character loses 40% of the time. There is no way we can nerf him. And I believe that is what's happening with Gibraltar. Ever since Gibraltar and Cossack were introduced, they have been getting buff on buff on buff, from hitbox to passive additions where they take less damage to things now like quality of life, but also big buffs like reviving faster, healing faster, shielding faster, all of those things in his Dome of Protection. And the reason is, I believe he is still a very low win rate champion or legend in comparison to all the others. And that's honestly, I believe, why he keeps getting buffed. And you look at it with Wraith, it makes sense, right? Everyone asks, why is Wraith getting nerfed again and again and again? I bet Wraith is a very high win rate legend. And I think it's trying to, they're trying to bring it in line. You have to look at it, you know, back in the development side, they're thinking 49 to 51% is actually a very good win rate for a champion. And so when you look at that, I keep saying champion because it's, it's, you know, it's hard, hard to get over it, but legend. And, uh, you know, if, if, if Gibraltar is at 46%, they're trying to find ways to buff that up without breaking him. And so that's why you keep seeing these quality of life changes that aren't that big. Uh, in the hands of a Gibraltar in your games, it's probably the reason that it's going down. And in a high level, now he has so many tools, he can probably be a 65% win rate in the 0.01% margin that people are playing him. And that becomes a tough situation. I wish them the best, but I just don't think we're going to start season three with nerfs for Gibraltar, uh, season four. And I just don't think he's going to see ner nerfs. I think we're going to see buffs, if anything, to some of the other legends that people are excited about. Octane's Mirage? I hope so. Let me know who you want to buff in season four. All right, we're getting good headway on this video. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. I wanted to do a few different videos. Now that I'm back, planning on daily content, not everything is going to be this crazy curated thing. Hopefully you're learning, you're having fun, you're hanging out, you're seeing gameplay. This is gameplay I, I used some of in my in my other video, but you didn't see the... You might actually, I actually have seen this whole video in one of my other videos, but uh, if you haven't, it's a good video to watch. Um, really, really fun game. All right, so SBMM, number four. Is SBMM going away like everyone wants hell no hell no are you kidding me are you kidding me do you know the outcry sbmm has had you know how people have been mad you know how many angry tweets sbmm has and that's skill-based matchmaking for those who don't know it is not going away because the facts are it helps retain players and that's the end of the day when you are designing a game and you are a player you know, it's very rare that a player or even a streamer gets to be in the design environment as long as even a week. Having a trip to see the design department is great. And you maybe have one meeting, they get your feedback, but you don't see what goes on on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's one of the things I love about what I did going to high res and learning that and being around it so invested in such a small company for three years that you could see all of these things and what actually makes designers make decisions and why gameplay studios do things that sometimes feel odd. SBMM has been met with a lot of vocal frustration, but that's from the very high percentage of players. And those percentage of players are going to get matched up against the very best players in the entire game. 
and the players that aren't talking about it are the ones that need it that are enjoying it and playing longer as a result and it's a very tricky situation because you have to manage the expectations of your high level but you also have to serve the populace of the game which keeps high level people in general in general not with SBMM completely but in general having a player base to keep the game going um you know this is not always true of all game studios but a lot of times people do say uh that you know the high level players or even the high level spenders are the ones that uh allow you know are like like basically here's the idea uh if you're a whale like in the, in a game and this is just kind of an off relationship if you're a whale and you spend like thousands of dollars on apex say you spent ten thousand dollars okay you need people in the game of apex otherwise you're not gonna be able to play and use your stuff so that's kind of the idea. It's also the kind of idea for SBMM as well. We know high level is what people want to see. That's what's exposed. That's what the vocal aspect of the game is about. But you do need players to fill up the game. And those are the people like, hey, even me sometimes. Uh, I can have my good days. You know, I can play, I can do some things, but I'm not at that 0.00001% like, you know, these TSM guys and Hal and Aberlalian and Reps. And you look at the LG, Estesu and Kasanya and Exons, and you look at these great teams and players. And you're just like, no, 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 that's not me. Um, they're the ones who have to deal with it. Uh, my suggestion is I don't think it's leaving, but I do hope it gets tweaked a little bit. And I do hope that if anything you take on the challenge and say now i'm getting pitted against the best players all the time i know you want to relax but dang if you show up and get ready to to grind there's a whole year of competitive play probably millions of dollars on the line this year uh that you could probably win uh that use it as just hey i i get better practice all the time you know that's how we look at it all right last one guys uh this has been a fun video to make i i really enjoy making these videos solos and duos will they be here in apex legends season four and permanently is the question no no you want them but they're not happening apex legends solos and duos are not happening and it's for the reason that we mentioned earlier with sbmm players who are having a better experience they go into a game they play against a crazy level player uh they're just gonna leave they're not gonna want to play anymore and when you have players who are in solos and duos, you have that experience a little bit more often. Even from the beginning, we've heard tweets and thoughts and when solos and duos came out from people saying that it seems like squads in Apex Legends retains better. And part of that is because, um, and we've seen that in other like Realm Royale, right? We were, we were I, I was there when they were working and making that game. Squads retain better in Realm, Realm Royale as well. And for whatever reason, I think it's just easier to, to place blame on someone else, to have fun, to take it easy, to have someone carry you and enjoy that experience versus a solo where it's so much on your own skill. When you lose, it feels very demoralizing to do so. And so retention gets very bad. People do not sign in. They stop playing like forever after solos a lot of times and a lot of these statistics. And so I think that's something that is unfortunately not going to stay permanently. Uh, but I do think we will get it more and more this season because the LTMs are awesome. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, had some comments on things that I've been saying. This is, again, a start of a week where we should be putting out a lot of content. So stay tuned, subscribe if you enjoy this kind of stuff, uh, and leave some comments on what you'd like to see. I I'm making a lot of content this week. It's season four, baby. Let's go. I'm excited. 10 a.m., we'll be tuning in live to the brand new trailer for season four gameplay. So stay tuned for that. And as always, never give up, never stop gaming. And I'll see you all next time.